Bonjour, c'est Claire à French in the Midlands. Hello, Claire at French in the Midlands here. Today's video is about impersonal verbs that you really, really need to know inside out. Let me explain what they are. They are called impersonal verbs because they're only used in the third person singular, which is the il form or it in English. And a good example of that in English is it is necessary to. You would never say I am necessary to. So that's it's those verbs I'm referring about. There's quite a few in French. Let's look in the present tense first and then I'll show you what happens in the other tenses later. The first one is really widely used and it's il faut. And it's the it is necessary to or we must, you must, one must. Il faut is general enough, so it could apply to anyone. And it's a good way of telling someone what to do without looking like you're telling them what to do. Example. Il faut partir maintenant. We must leave now. But it could also mean you must leave now. It's not specified. It's a, it's a, it is necessary to. You will know from the context which one it is. Other example, il faut aller chez le dentiste. You must go to the dentist. So you would use that if somebody's talking to you and saying, oh, I've got toothache and say, well, il faut aller chez le dentiste. That's when you'd use it. The next one is manquer. So il manque literally means there is something missing. Il manque un crayon. There's a pencil missing. Il ne me manque rien. It's an interesting one because literally it means nothing's missing to me. In effect, I have everything. I don't need anything. This is something we'll come back to further down the line. It's quite a complex structure. Just remember that for now. Il manque, il ne manque pas or il ne manque rien. Rester. Il reste is there is something left. It's a nice structure to use because it makes you sound really like a native. Il reste un gâteau. There is one cake left. Il nous reste un 10 euros. We have 10 euros left. So literally you're saying there remains to us 10 euros. Avoir is your next one. Very, very useful expression. Il y a, which means there is or there are. Il y a beaucoup d'enfants ici. There's a lot of children here. Il n'y a rien à voir. That's in the negative. There's nothing to see. Of course, when we speak, we say il y a rien à voir or even y a rien à voir because we speak quite fast. Luckily for you, il y a is both, there is and there are, so you don't have to change the a when it's plural. The last one is faire. And you know this one because when we talk about the weather and we say, oh, the weather's really nice, il fait beau aujourd'hui. That's what we say. The weather's nice today. And actually we say it does nice today. And that automatically means we're talking about the weather. Il fait plutôt froid. It's rather cold. So it works for the temperature as well, but it's only weather and temperature, nothing else. Now, as I said before, we're going to have a look what happens when you put these in different tenses. And I chose the three main ones you're going to use in a past tense. The others don't worry about it. They're just ER verbs, so they will follow the normal patterns. These are irregular, so that's why I wanted to... Um, highlight them. Falloir, so il faut, it is necessary to. In the imparfait, which is imperfect, il fallait, it was necessary to, or it used to be necessary to. Passé composé, which is the perfect tense, il a fallu, it was necessary to as a one-off. Futur immédiat, which is immediate future, il va falloir, we're going to have to is how you would translate it. Futur, the future. Il faudra, we will have to, or you will have to. 
And finally, conditionnel, conditional, il faudrait, we should. Quite widely used, this one, we should, il faudrait. The next one is avoir, as in il y a, it's the a of il y a. In the imparfait, it's il y avait, there was. Passé composé, il y a eu, there has been, so that's the one-off. Futur immédiat, il va y avoir. Futur, il y aura. Conditionnel, il y aurait. Finally, faire, as in il fait. So let's go back to the weather example of il fait beau. If you want to say, it used to be nice, or it was nice, as in all day long, you would say il faisait beau. Passé composé in this context would be used to say, oh, il a fait beau. At one point, it was really nice, but then it didn't last. That's the difference between the two. Futur immédiat, il va faire. So, demain, il va faire beau. Tomorrow, it's going to be nice. You could also use le futur. Demain, il fera beau. Tomorrow, it will be nice. And conditionnel, il ferait beau. It would be nice. And then you expect the if after that. That's all for now. I hope that was clear enough. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Comment below if you have any questions. And for anything else, go to frenchinthemidlands.com. A bientôt.